All right, welcome back, everybody. Today we are covering the French 75. So this cocktail, classic cocktail, is one of the most interesting cocktails because the history is super complicated. This one really has taken me a long time to dissect and go through. I think one of the best ways to do it is going to be to just trace the recipe variations throughout the years and the decades so we can really see how it evolves. And that kind of lets you put all the pieces together and you'll get a clear picture at the end. So the French 75 traces its origins back to World War I, and some may say even a little bit before then, but World War I is where we're going to begin. So this cocktail was originally known, and hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly, as the Soissant Cons, and that is the French word for 75. The naming of this cocktail happened during World War I, and it was named after the artillery machine gun that the French had at the time. Uh, it was a revolutionary piece of equipment. And it was seen as a symbol of hope for the war against Germany. They thought that this piece of equipment really set them over the edge and gave and would give the Allies the upper hand in the battle. So this famous light machine gun was known for its portability and its rate of fire. It could fire 15 rounds a minute. And it was really an all-around weapon from anti-air to anti-tank. It was the most famous weapon in the war. And, and really, like I mentioned, it got the hopes of the Allies up that they really stood a chance in World War I. A staggering 20,000 guns and 20 million shells were used during the war. So like I mentioned, the French 75 would start out being known as the Soissant Cons, and then eventually the 75 cocktail, just the number 75, and then eventually it would evolve into the French 75 naming that you know today. So let's talk a little bit about glassware. This is one of those topics in cocktail history that isn't really touched on a ton because the evolution of glassware doesn't really happen. And glassware is important for some cocktails, but also you can just drink cocktails in whatever glass you have. The more important thing is that you're enjoying the cocktail. We have well-documented proof for the French 75 of the evolution of the glassware. So it starts off in this World War I era as being served in a coupe glass. It then goes from the coupe glass to the Collins glass in the 1920s and 30s. And this is like the standard glassware for champagne cocktails at the time. You would see various cocktails if they included champagne being served in a Collins glass. And this would stay the trend for glassware for champagne cocktails all the way up until the 1980s. And then it evolved into more of the champagne flute, and which is exactly what the French 75 is served in today. So not only does the French 75 have an evolution of glassware, we also see evolution in the recipes. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. So I'm going to preface it with saying that nobody really knows who made the first 75 cocktail and named it after that French light machine gun. But we're going to go through the history in a timeline order, and hopefully we can clear up some things and get a good idea of when the first ones were made. So the first written mention of the Soissant Cons was in the Washington Herald in 1915, and the recipe was written as a third grenadine, a third gin, a third applejack, and a dash of lemon juice. And that was the first mention of the Soissant Cons. In this writing in the Washington Herald, quoted as saying, there has been brought back to Broadway from the front by war correspondent E. Alexander Powell's Soissant Cons cocktail. And this quote suggests that the cocktail originated in World War I and then was exposed to America by a correspondent named Alexander Powell. So the second written reference of this Soissant Cons cocktail was from a newspaper called The Sphere out of London. Uh, November 27th, 1916. The piece was titled Paris in Wartime, and it mentions this Soissant Cons cocktail made at a Ciro's bar in Paris, and it reads, There is none of the lavish expenditure which London managers have not scrupled to make. The only indication of levity which any restaurant manifests is a cocktail invented by the mixer of the American bar at Ciro's called a Soissant Cons, an agreeable blend of Calvados, apple brandy, and other mysterious ingredients. And like I mentioned, this was November 27th, 1916. So this article in particular is important because it forms a connection between the Ciro's Bar in Paris and the Soissant Cons. So if you look if you look up any cocktail history on the French 75, you'll see that a man by the name of Harry McElhone gets mentioned alongside the French 75 as a possible creator. The reason for this is because at the time that Ciro's opened... Harry was working at a bar down the street from Ciro's and has some influence on this cocktail. But regardless, the French 75 that Harry was making at the time definitely would not have been similar to the French 75 that you know today. The French 75 at that time was Calvados heavy and then also some gin in it as well. Um, but it, it was not reminiscent of the French 75 of today. So that brings us to the first written reference of the cocktail. 
This would happen in 1922 in a book called Cocktails, How to Mix It by Robert Vermeer. And he gives the recipe as two dashes of grenadine, a teaspoon of lemon juice, a six gill of calvados, two six gill of dry gin, shake well, strain into the cocktail glass. But this entry is important, not because of the recipe, even though it is strange. It's important because this is when the Soissons Cons changes the name to just the 75, just the number 75. It's also important because Vermeer gives us a little bit more context into the creation of this 75 cocktail, as he calls it. So in this book, he writes that the cocktail originated during World War I in Paris, where it was very much appreciated, and it was named after the light machine gun that won the war for the Allies. He also says that it was first invented by Henry at Henry's Bar. This is when a lot of confusion comes in for the French 75 history because a lot of people read this entry and they immediately think he meant Harry of Harry's Bar in Paris. Harry's is a very famous bar in Paris and a lot of cocktails come out of this establishment. But actually we can trace Henry and Henry's Bar to the French 75. So he actually did mean Henry. He wasn't talking about Harry. Uh, I can see how the the mix-up can occur, um, but it's important that you know that it is Henry at Henry's Bar, and we'll see why in a second. So let's talk about this story between Harry McElhone, who we mentioned previous, the guy that is often credited with the creation of the French 75, and then Henry at Henry's Bar that Vermeer just mentioned. So Henry's Bar was actually located just about a two-minute walk from where Harry McElhone would have been working at the time that the creation of the French 75 occurred. So what likely happened is Henry created the French 75 at Henry's bar. And then Harry McElhone, obviously trying bars in his local area would have happened into this establishment, tried the drink, loved it, started serving it to people as well. And then the popularity just took off from there with more people associating the cocktail to Harry McElhone because he would eventually become a little bit more prominent in the bartending scene in the area, and thus he would have had the cocktail related back to him. But it's worth noting that unlike some people in cocktail history who claim they created a cocktail when they really didn't, uh, Harry McElhone never claims creation of the Soissons Cons, the 75, the French 75, in any of his writings or books. Not once does he connect the cocktail to himself. It's just other people outside of him that are doing this. So that says a lot right there. I think if he truly would have created the cocktail uh, with how much he gave to mixology and in the whole industry, he would have put his name with the cocktail. There's no reason not to, but that says a lot. It, and I think truly the creation of the cocktail lies with Henry at Henry's bar, just a two minute walk from where Harry McElhone would have been practicing his bartending. So if you know how to make a French 75 today, you know that it It's a champagne drink. So the first notable recipe that is reminiscent of the one that we have today comes in 1927 by a Judge Jr. out of the book called Here's How, the second impression of the book. And this is the recipe. Two jiggers of Gordon water, which would have been gin, one part lemon juice, a spoonful of powdered sugar, cracked ice, fill the rest of a tall glass with champagne. It says in the notes at the bottom, if you use soda water instead of champagne, you have a Tom Collins. That book, it's mentioned as the French 75. And then we spoke about the Soissons Cons earlier, and that was recipe-wise a little bit different, and that's when they split. So you'll see that the French 75 becomes more correlated after this recipe that I just mentioned by Judge Jr. comes a little bit more correlated with a champagne cocktail. And then the Soissons Cons, which was very Calvados heavy, apple brandy, starts being related more towards a different cocktail. It, and this is That's where the road split. Those Calvados cocktails start to be known as the Tunny cocktails. I think that's the name of it, Tunny. So just to clarify, the difference would have been after Judge Jr.'s publication of the French 75, that's when it becomes champagne. Champagne, gin, sugar, lemon juice, and that's your French 75. Whereas the Soissons Cons becomes the Tunny. And the Tunny is the one with Apple Jack, which is your apple brandy, gin, a little absinthe, and a teaspoon of grenadine. And that's when you see them split, and they're still split to this day. The French 75 today is the Champagne Heavy, and the Tunny is the one with apple brandy. So this Judge Jr. French 75 that we know today uh, as the one with champagne 
really takes off in popularity, and then that is exponentially grown once Harry Craddock writes about it in his 1930 cocktail book, the Savoy cocktail book, and he has the exact same recipe as the Judge Jr. one, making it a champagne cocktail. And that really solidifies the French 75 from the, to a champagne cocktail. And that's really where we are today. There are a ton of variations, the French 76, the French 125, and they all pretty much vary depending on what spirit you use. A lot of them will sub out gin. There's very popular variations of the French 75, like the French 95, which instead of gin uses bourbon in it. There's also the French 125, which substitutes brandy for the gin. There's the ever popular French 76, which subs vodka for the gin. And there's truly tons and tons more variation. As you can imagine, you can sub out the gin for pretty much any spirit, and then they'll just name it something different. But regardless of all that, if you've never had a French 75, I would highly recommend it. I'll go ahead and put my recipe up on the screen now. Super easy to make. The key here is obviously you can play around with the champagne, um, but the gin adds a lot to this cocktail. Uh, the more floral gins that you have are going to be a little bit better in here. Um, those more botanical heavy gins, the one that have a good nose, good floral taste, those are going to go great in your French 75s because they just play with that champagne perfectly, as well as the lemon peel garnish. So I would go ahead and suggest you this recipe as a base. Feel free to experiment. People put different juices, different things in them. As you could tell by the variations I listed earlier, there are infinite possibilities. Let me know what your favorite variation is. Try French 75 for New Year's Eve if you haven't tried one. Let me know what you think. Subscribe if you like this. Like the video. It helps me a ton. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.